Hey, what's going on guys? It's Matt from RC Overload and uh, we're back to working on the Axle Yeti a little more today. So last night I decided to jump ahead a little bit and uh, put a few more suspension upgrades into it, more steering upgrades. And um, I'll show you guys that here in a minute. But for those of you that are just now starting to watch, uh, the first video was kind of a quick overview, nothing too serious, uh, as to what my plans are and what I'm doing as well as showing you guys a uh, problem with the front differential where the pinion gears kind of strip out and if you're curious about that go check out the last video which will be in the description box um, but on top of that replacing the front differential unit and uh, the gears in it I should say we also went ahead and installed a carbon fiber front shock tower made by Extreme Racing now I love carbon fiber so once I start I had to put it on there uh, I just love the look of it. Look, it makes it look badass, <laughs> basically. Um, I'll just give you guys a quick glimpse here. As you can see, it's the same exact setup as the stock uh, shock tower. The holes are all uh, a perfect match. Two of the holes I did notice, uh, you kind of had to file down a little bit more because they were just a little too close together. Didn't line up with the rest of the holes on the truck. Um, but that was the only problem I had run into with it. Now, Extreme Racing, they do make a roof panel for it. I just chose not to get it. Um, it's carbon fiber. I just didn't want to scratch it up. Carbon fiber looks too pretty to scratch up. <laughs> um, so that's why I just stuck with the front shock tower. But, as you guys can already see, there's a few more upgrades onto it. And um, I'm going to bring the camera in a little closer and give you guys a little better idea and better lighting on this. Um, but we're also going to install a couple more parts into it. And again, this whole build is built around the fact we're going to beef it up, make it stronger, um, improve the steering and the suspension in this whole thing as best as we can, and add a few cool little touches to it to, uh, you know, make it look good. So, let me get you guys a little closer here. Alright? Okay, guys, so... Um, yeah, like I was saying, I did a few extra upgrades um, last night. Kind of jump ahead a little bit here. Let me show you guys. All right, so the first thing you guys are seeing right off is the two new lower control arms. Uh, these are the RPM black lower control arms, and they are also designed for the Axial XO. Okay, so they work on both vehicles. It's the same setup. Uh, as you guys know, uh, the bolt that holds on this lower control arm here. Mine, after doing two runs, was starting to come loose, and I've even heard a few extra people saying that theirs were also coming loose and popping out. Uh, it must have been from one of the jumps, but the control arm, the stock one, actually caused it to bend. So I had to get two, uh, two new screws, decided to just replace both of them, and they come in as a kit. If anybody is curious on those screws, it is... AXA0128 is the part number, and they are uh, a 3 by 61 millimeter hex screw. Okay, so there's that for you. I'll even put that in the description box, and it does come with six of them, so you do get four extra just in case. Um, but the one thing that I did to try to help imp make it so that doesn't happen again is if you guys actually take a look right where my finger is you'll see a little square inside of there is a nut and that's where that screw goes into so I tried to put a little bit of uh, blue Loctite hopefully that'll cause it to bind up a little more and keep it from coming back out otherwise I'm gonna have to figure something else out to prevent that from happening again okay so that's one part now I also if you guys can take a look here go right onto the steering rack um, as you know, the steering is very loose, flexible, bendable, whatever you want to call it. Um, it really, in my opinion, the steering kind of sucks in it for uh, what it is and what you're trying to do. So one of the biggest upgrades that you can really do to this is actually take the Vanquish steering rack, which is this black part that I'm touching, okay? and get the Vanquish Shear Steering Rack, which are two metal pins that go on either one of the units. This is a steering uh, saver. 
uh, and this is just another guide, okay? And the pins actually go in the middle of it, and it comes with ball bearings. Now, there are, before it was just a plastic rod with some plastic inside of it to act like a bearing, uh, but it's really not, and it causes way too much flex and play. So if you get those two things, as you can see, a lot smoother, a lot easier to move, um, and there's really no bending whatsoever in it. So that's one of the upgrades in the steering that you can do, and we're going to go over even more of them later on, okay? So the last thing that I did uh, last night, as you guys can see, is install a steering servo. And yes, this is a Sabox steering servo. All right, so I'll let you guys here take a quick look. This is a digital cordless servo. Now, I wanted to get the most amount of torque that I thought was reasonable for this, uh, as well as I wanted it to be quick. Okay, I wanted my steering to be quick in case I need to make a quick maneuver and get out of a quick situation with it. All right, so I decided to get this one, and this is the Savox SC1256TG. Okay, that is the part number. And what you guys can even see, if I can get it, whoop, uh, you might be able to see it in there. There we go, okay. This is not waterproof. Uh, I'm not worried about that because I'm really not going to be running the truck through water that much. But it does have titanium and aluminum gears inside of it, okay. It's a coreless motor and produces 277 ounces of torque. I think that should be substantial. I was looking around the 300 ballpark range. Uh, so the 277 for my price range I think is reasonable and I think will do what I need it to do without a problem. Uh, it also has a, within the turn radius, okay, the pivot of the arm, how quickly this can move back and forth is 0.15 seconds. So that's actually really quick. So again, hopefully this steering save, uh, Savox steering servo, excuse me, uh, is going to do what I need it to do. If anything, the lower link mounts are really going to improve the overall response in the rear end. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put on the last two here on the other side, and I'll show you guys how to do that. Now on the rear shocks, we aren't really upgrading those, because there really is no upgrades at the moment, at the time of this filming. And so I'm still stuck with using the stock one for right now. But I did change out the fluid, and we did put in uh, 30 weight fluid, which I think will do very well in it. Um, I think what was in it before was either 10 or 20 weight fluid, I believe. Uh, I really just wanted to stiffen it up a little bit more because I felt like it was a little too flexible uh, when hitting the bumps. So I wanted to stiffen it up a little, make it a little more of a dampening effect out of it. Uh, the spring itself, we're keeping, you know, again, we're just testing it all out. We're going to see how well it works, and then later on, we can change things as we go. So, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, and again, we're just going to go ahead and install the other side for those pieces, the lower control arm mount uh, for the body side, and then the upper shock tower uh, aluminum mount as well. So, now that I just talked your head off... Then you probably want to kill me already. Let's get into it. <laughs> well, we will start with the upper shock. All right. And the easiest way I kind of found doing this. <coughs> excuse me. Take your stock bushing. Okay. Which is kind of a unique looking bushing. It's almost got like a spacer in there. Put that through. I'm going to take one of our screws, and by the way, we are still using the K&K um, steel screw kit. Bah. So, take it. I'm going to put the screw through the mount, holding the shock. Put it all together as one piece, okay? And it'll just make it a lot easier to put in. Line it up. Grab your tool, and screw it in. Just hold it there until it gets snug. All right, um, and then we'll. Uh, the rear one doesn't really need anything, 
uh, but I am putting in a screw into it again just for added security uh, and you know overall strength of it there's really nothing in the back there there was a bushing I'm not putting the bushing back in okay so we're just putting that screw in now there are two more holes okay take a quick peek two more holes on the outside and this is one of the screws that uh, Team k, &K hardware kit does not supply for it okay I'm just trying to get my screwdriver thing to work here come on there we go and you will have to use the black ones that are on there that come with the kit so just pop those in okay so that's in you know looks pretty looks cool I had a little bit of strength within this section of the shock um, again I don't think it's gonna really improve a lot I think it's just there more for show so we'll see but now we're gonna move on to the lower control arm mount which I found the easiest way is to actually just to hold the truck up like this and you know what I'm gonna move the camera okay uh, hold it up like this only because with the new mount okay shiny you get a little pin now the stock mount already has that little pin actually mounted in it and it goes right above where my finger is if you guys can see the screw hole now a little blurry um, but that well cylinder the pin whatever you want to call it uh, will go right up in there and the easiest way to do that is actually to just take your pin place it in the little groove that it goes in at the top okay take the unit the lower control arm mount and just place it in and hold it until you can get two of the screws to hold it in place let's see come on get going there we go there's one there's two Oh no. All right, hold on. Found it. Let's try that again. Hey, went in that time. We got the nice long one that goes in on the side. Okay. And that will tighten all this up and then move to the uh, screw on the top here and then put the extra screw that's going to mount up right here for the uh, lower control arm just so we have it there already. Okay, it's now on the top. You'll see two holes, okay? You're only using one of the holes for the upper half of the mount. And we'll just put that one in. Oh, oh, oh. Almost put that in the wrong one. Okay. And just tighten that up. Okay. And then the last part is just taking the screw that's actually going to be used for the mount. And we're just kind of placing it in there for right now um, because this stuff is going to come out afterwards when we do the lower control arms. Come on. All right, cool. So we'll leave that just like that. So there we go. Got the two lower control arm mounts all looking pretty in there. Definitely add um, some strength to that movement that's in the rear end. Uh, rear shocks are back up. And uh, that is it for right now. So a few more upgrades on it now. And uh, looking around, we still got a lot of parts still left to put on. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, and I will see you on the next RC Overload. See ya.